as an artist, as a creative, sometimes we tell ourselves, well, I'm just not good at the business side of things. And that's okay, but we're about to burst your bubble because there's some things that you can implement into your business as an artist that's going to change the game. Hey everyone, welcome back. Whether you're listening or watching, we are thrilled to have you here and we have a muralist. I've never met a muralist before, but I'm absolutely freaking fascinated with her work. I love it. We are joined by Andrea Earhart and we wanted to bring her on because as of right now, at the time of recording, you are in your eighth consecutive day of releasing an NFT and they've all sold every day, correct? Correct. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm brand new into this space and I've been dropping one every day for the past eight days and they've been selling typically within hours and it's just blowing my mind. I'm super pumped for you, but we got to just figure out some of the backstory here, which is, and Heather asked kind of when we were chatting right before we hit record about, was this like how you saw life going? Like I'm going to paint art and maybe it's going to be big art or little art and people are going to buy it and that's what my life is going to consist of. Was that part of your master plan or not? No, um, I I'd always loved art. You know, I'd always created since I was a little kid, but I never thought of it as a viable, profitable business. I actually went to college, started majoring in business because I liked numbers and I figured I would just use that to get some kind of general job. And then about halfway through college, switched my major to painting. I think everybody switches their major in college. And then even after I graduated with a painting degree, I was like, okay, I have a degree in coloring. What am I going to to do with this. And I just started doing <laughs> paintings for people around town. I started painting logos and just slowly but surely started getting more commissions. And I was like, maybe I could really do this as like a business. And then I had a really lucky break. I got picked up by Bass Pro Shops really early, about a year after college. And I started my mural career just painting logos and then eventually giant murals all over North America for Bass Pro Shops for two years. And so it was a really amazing learning experience. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Just drop that on us. Listen, you you have a gift. Um, you said, you know, you have this skill set, this talent, guys, linked up in the show notes is her Instagram. It's freaking fire. But you also said, I love numbers and I love business. And we kind of associate business and creativity like on, on two different sides of the brain. And what a gift that you have that you're able to marry those two together and help so many artists. Before we get into the NFT side of things, how did you start deciding oh, I'm going to help artists with their business? And maybe you can just touch on maybe some of the business issues that a lot of artists have. Yeah, sure. So I happen to love the, the the business and the the marketing side of things, like figuring out, you know, we're making something with our hands and then we're selling it and then we're providing for our families in that way. This is like I, being a muralist is the best career in the world. So yeah, I worked my way up and through lots of hours of practice, I uh, painted much bigger walls as we as we got further along. And then I just kind of hit a point where I was c consistently making six, six figures every year in my art business. And I was like, I feel like I'm meant to help other artists do this too, because th there are so many artists out there who just, they, they want to paint, but they don't typically like the number side of things. And since I happen to love that, I'm like, maybe I should help them too. So for the past three they? years, I think the word sales is kind of like a, a weird uh -huh. thing with artists. It's really hard for us to show up and promote and figure out all of that. Like the m majority of us, we really just want to paint. We want to create. We want to stay in our studio and be the it, introverted artists that we are <laughs> and and just do that. Yeah. So I for the past three years, I've just I've been mentoring artists through the Artist Academy and we've had some amazing artists go through who started from zero and are now full time create creating either through murals or we have some, I mean, of all, all different kinds, we have some wood burning artists who have gone through and they're, yeah, now they're providing for their families. Holy crap. Sorry. I didn't even realize the Artist Academy. I'm so sorry. Like that's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. I created it about three years ago and just slowly started making business videos for artists just to show them how to make a brand and show up on social media and grow a following and just do all of the things. How do you help 
artists overcome that roadblock of selling because this helps with NFTs too because guess what Paul and Janet listening to the show when you make an NFT you still got to sell it we can't get away from the marketing and the sales piece even in the NFT space so how have you helped artists kind of overcome that mind block of selling specifically so we always start small right like you just maybe post a photo on online and you do a caption and then it's really through consistency and just slowly putting yourself out there and slowly talking to more people and it's just about a lot of rep repetition and just putting it out there. And I mean, there's a lot of different sales tactics that you can do, with, like especially with video. Video has been a huge way that I have grown my following over the past few years doing Instagram Reels, TikTok. I have over 400,000 followers on TikTok, which is crazy. <laughs> so I, I have them come into the, to the academy. I'm like, okay, this is exactly how to film yourself. This is exactly what the ca kind of captions you should do to get people commenting and just show them exactly how I'm doing it and then give them the the reins and they practice and do it on their own and their following grows as well. Actually, the wood burning artist that I just mentioned, Austin, he joined the Academy two years ago and now he's about to surpass me in in TikTok followers any day now. It's amazing. You're not mad at that though. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in number one, you did not get lucky with Bass Pro Shops, right? Like that's clearly a measure of skill and work and opportunities present themselves to people like you and, and we believe the same thing. And then it's like, okay, so then you're like, let me teach others. And I'm looking at the Artist Academy and you're talking about how you've helped people significantly in a place where they're normally deficient because you understand the community. So whatever is going right, like a lot of people would be like, don't mess with with it. But all of a sudden NFTs come along and I'm really interested in like what your initial reaction was to this. And if you felt any fear, or if you were threatened by them or you're like, this is a huge opportunity. What were your initial feelings when, when the NFT wave started coming? My initial thought was this is really confusing. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm. like, like everybody. But no, I, I think it's just like, it's a different art form. And it's it's online. And it's very similar to selling a print online is kind of how I think of it. And it, in terms of the pricing and in terms of the transaction and everything, I mean, the crypto world can get really confusing and whatnot. But I, I like to relate it just back to the real world of selling art. And this is just another way to do it. It doesn't need to be all that confusing. We had a question from Lucky the Crypto Cat over on Twitter and on the lines of uh, selling and marketing, she shares that she feels like she's annoyingly shilly on other social media outlets. How in the world do you start marketing your work without being shilly? She says, I wake up every morning and quote, shill my work all over Twitter and I seriously feel like I'm getting nowhere. Really? Oh no, that's so sad. It's so funny because I feel like a lot of artists specifically like that I've noticed, they're constantly putting their, themselves out there and they're constantly on Facebook and, and Instagram and TikTok and, and or LinkedIn is a new one too. And you're just putting your stuff out there. And then it just takes one person to see something and share it and or hire you for a big job. And then you're off to the races. You know, it's just it is a lot of consistency. It is a lot of just every day. For example, every single time I post my NFT, I'm putting it on Twitter. I'm tweeting about it maybe twice a day. I'm tweeting about the one I just sold the previous day. I'm putting it on Instagram and then share it on Facebook. It goes on LinkedIn as well. And I'm also sharing it on my Instagram story multiple times. So I am putting in the work to put it out there for as many eyes to see because we only need one, right? We only need one person to see, be like, oh, I want that and buy. Why are you not self-conscious about that is the deeper question. And I think the meaning behind what Heather's asking as well, like yeah. you are putting in the work, we get that, but like what is allowing you to do that without fear of, of what people may think or how many people won't see it or give a shit? Um, I just don't really think like that. I guess. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I see art as entertainment and I don't necessarily look at it as if I'm selling every single time. I'm just entertaining my, my audience. All social media is full of politics and all this crazy news and random you know, things. It's just art, I think, is quality that's on social media. It's the posts that people want to see and people like to in interact with because not everybody can do what we can do at as an artist, not everybody can create the things that we can create. And so, you know, me posting a time lapse video of me painting one day, like people like to watch that. They're entertained oh, yeah. by that. And, and I'm not every time saying, you know, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. That's not it. I'm, I'm thinking of it as I'm entertaining them. And then if they're in a position to buy, they will. Like, I don't necessarily even have to say this is for sale. Like, 
people know. And if they want it, they'll ask for it and or they'll go to my website and or my OpenSea account and they'll buy it. So I think just thinking of it as entertainment first instead of sales. I want to highlight that point because that's a marketing tip right now that we really need to understand. The difference between quote shilling and properly marketing yourself is not a volume thing, I don't believe. I think it's a value thing. Where are we coming in saying, you don't want to miss this. Don't sleep on this. This is out right now versus what you do, Andrea, which is just thoughtful content that stand alone, what you just said, it's entertaining, it's valuable, people want to see it, it's educational. So how do you go about positioning when I'm going to go put up my new NFT that's for sale, I'm going to post it on Instagram, what goes through your mind as far as writing a caption and getting it out there to make sure that it's presented in a way that's not shilly and is actually valuable? I don't know, I just kind of put it out there that I kind of say whatever I'm thinking, like I, I'll say like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so excited to have this out because I am. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm I'm so excited that one is just sold because I am excited. And I also say thank you so much to everybody because I because I am thankful. You're what? authentic. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, weird. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you can do like certain mar marketing tactics that's be, like you can ask a question and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Or which one should I put out next? And and that gets people talking, which then, you know, puts your stuff out more. And so you, you can do something like that. But at the same time, don't ask questions if you're not actually you don't actually want feedback. Let's talk about you getting into NFTs first looking around, but then being like, you know what, I'm going to publish something, I'm going to create something and I'm going to sell it. Uh, talk to me about exactly what you did, because that is one of the predominant questions we get from some of the creators in our community. Okay, yeah. So I'll go over exactly what I did. So basically, I have a painting that I created in real life that I spent many hours on. So I just took a picture of it. And then I made it into an animated short movie kind of a thing using the app Motion Leap, which is very easy. <laughs> um, and then I converted that into an MP4 file and a GIF file, and then I uploaded it into OpenSea, and I just put it up there. And I think pricing is another fun topic to talk about. I feel like pricing is just like pricing in real life. So my paintings nowadays, they're, I mean, they sell for maybe a thousand dollars. And so if, when I'm pricing on OpenSea, I, I don't think it's reasonable to ask for more than that, right? And I kind of think of it as I'm selling, I don't know, kind of the same products and somewhere between like a print and the real thing. So I've kind of priced it right in between that. So I think a good tip for artists it, from what I've seen is if you're selling a painting in real life for a certain number, maybe price it at half of that amount in the NFT space and then go up from there. I think it, I think there's a lot of power in starting low and then going high. So the first time I, I ever posted, I put it out there and I planned on listing it for 0.12 ETH, which is just over $300. It feels I pathetic actually... to put in numbers like 0.12, by the way. Like, I, I hate <laughs> yeah. that shit. Like, I just need to say, like, it messes with your mind when you're like, it's a, this is actually a good amount of money, but it, it looks like nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that, that was the plan. However, my first sale, I think I got a little bit of luck, which is like preparation meets opportunity, right? So I... I put it up there and then I didn't list it for sale. I just put it up and somebody made me an offer for 0.1, which is a little under $300. And I was like, yes, sure. Yeah, that's that's very close to what I was going to listen to anyway. Thank you so much. And they bought it. So the next night I just did it again. I was like, okay, I'm going to put up painting number two with the exact same way that, that I did the first one. Only this one was a different painting and it was animated differently. I put the second one up. And I was like, okay, let's just raise it by a little bit. So I'll put it at 0.12 and then somebody bought it. And then the third night I put it at 0.13 and then the fourth night 0.14 and then 0.15 for the fifth. And I just kept going up and asked to 0.18 last night and people have bought them. So <laughs> it's just, I'm just playing with the market and seeing what's possible and starting low and going high. I'm pretty sure we're going to be buyers of some of your art, but let me ask you this. Everything you said sounded 
freaking great. However, what if you had listed it at point one, the low price, which is about half of what you would charge for in real life, and it didn't sell? What would you have done then? Because artists are going to want to know that. I would have just kept sharing it on all the different platforms and just kept putting it out there. One other strategy um, is to attach something to it and ma make it more valuable in that way. And so I've started attaching Art Artist Academy scholarships to mine, which is basically mm -hmm. if, if you, yeah, if you purchase an, an NFT, you then get a scholarship. If you're an artist, you can use that scholarship. But if if you're not an artist, then I can help you gift that in your name to an artist in need who could use it. And yeah, it's just a whole thing. I'm, I'm currently working through that process of actually like getting it together in the whole program, but that's how I am making it even more valuable to you know increase the sales of it. I love it. Logistically, are you doing a smart contract with that or is it just hey, you email me, it's like an unlockable content on OpenSea, like you email me and I'll give you access. Are you doing it one by one? How are you technically doing that? So I'm just figuring it out as I go. <laughs> and sure. right now I am in contact with all, all of the people who have bought them. And so I'm just giving it to them that way. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I'm really not sure, but so far this is working. Also, every time someone has bought something from me, I have messaged them and been like, thank you so much. And we've talked and I've had a couple people be like, mentors to me in a way and be like, hey, you should go into this room or you should follow this person and like helping me out in this crazy space because I'm very open that I'm very new to it. And they're helping me connect to other people and get bigger and which isn't helping their investment as well. And so it's very appreciative. You are our people. You are so fucking our people. It's ridiculous. I love it. You had a substantial following on Instagram, correct me if I'm wrong, before entering into the NFT space. You're not new to putting out content and business and marketing yourself. You're a successful, very successful artist prior to NFTs. And one question that we get a lot is this following one from MarkRob.eth over on Twitter, which is how do you effectively transition and onboard your existing community and fan base into an NFT space because we have heard, Andrea, and I don't know if this is your experience, that sometimes people are resistant with that. There is a learning curve and then also too, sometimes there's a pre-existing opinions about NFTs. How did you start introducing the topic of NFTs to your existing fan base? Yeah, so I'm not pushing them at all. I'm just letting people who are already in the space make the purchase. I'm not in a place to want to sell somebody on coming into this world. I think that's completely a decision that they need to make on their own. So I'm just promoting it. I'm sharing a bunch of information, really a bunch of YouTube videos that I'm finding that are very helpful on explaining what an, an NFT is and how it's infecting the, the environment and just the, all of the stuff so that people can be more educated about it and they can make that decision on their own. Again, I'm not really trying to sell anybody on it. It's just like, if you would love to come in here, great. I'd love for you to be a customer and to give a scholarship and all of that, but that's up to them. As a you know revenue stream for NFTs, what are you a Aspiring to do? What if, and this is not far fetched, judging alone by this conversation, that you can continue and sell and sell? And maybe you're going to be like, hey guys, I'll see you in a month. I'm going to come back with 30 NFTs and I'm going to drop them. And then all of a sudden they're selling at one, two, three K a piece or whatever ETH is at the time. How much of that is going to maybe seem desirable versus what you do on a normal basis um, within real life projects that you might get hired to do? I mean, all of that sounds really appealing, <laughs> but I think th this is just an another branch of my art business. I'm always going to keep creating murals and I'm always going to keep helping other artists. And so this is just another branch of it. And yeah, we'll just we'll just kind of see how it goes. I have some ideas, some plans of things to drop. So like I'm doing the one, one by one method right now, but I have a collection of really small mini cloud series, about 20, 20 of them. And so I was thinking about maybe dropping a mini cloud series for maybe a little bit less than what I'm selling right now. I think there's something to starting small and then increasing, but increasing slowly. I'm not in any hurry to make, you know, a million or whatever, you know. So I think my next drop is going to be ones that are a little bit less, but there's going to be more of them. I also try to look at it as in the eyes of an investor too. I think getting in early and, you know, helping me <laughs> like through this space, I think we can all grow together in that way. At Tara Roskell over on Twitter, incredible human artist. She's very active in our community. Make sure you guys hit her up and show us some love. But she wanted us to ask you if you personally came into the NFT space without a large existing following, what would you concentrate on? I would concentrate on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram. We don't hear that one very often. 
Sure. Well, I, I actually went through and double checked everybody who was buying from me because I knew I was coming on here and that way I could share the information with you guys. And so I've had two sales d- directly from Twitter and the rest of them have been from Instagram. So Damn. yeah, I would never Revelations. thought. <laughs> yeah. I would also start small again, like start and give things out for maybe less and just build it up because I think there's, from what I've seen, there's a lot of artists who want to come in and just like make like $500 right, right off the bat. But I think there's something to be said for people who come in with the long game in mind and just say, okay, I'm going to really try this for six months and see what happens and just build it up from there and just start small, post about it every single day on all of those platforms. And I think there's big things that could happen if you stick with that strategy. This all seems like you are a person who is enjoying the journey, all right? Like you're enjoying it. You're not just kind of uh, limiting yourself or, or setting these goals, artificial goals that you know people might look as maybe vanity metrics or or money driven and you're doing it slow but along every journey of course you're going to have uh, some lessons learned so like so far in these eight sales of nfts or just even getting into nfts in general like what are some things you'd learn that you might would tell uh, artists that are potentially looking to get into the nft world or just anyone curious about it whatsoever yeah so i've noticed that the nft space is really full of a lot of okay i I say this with a grain of salt, very simple art right now. And it's, I mean, it's cute and it's fun, but it's generally very simple. So I think there's an amazing opportunity for artists who come in who really can stand out. So have maybe like paintings that take a lot more time to create and you you add some motion to it. Basically, it's really easy to wow someone right now because there's a lot of simple art out there. So I think going at it with that strategy too, like uh, I, there's so much potential. <laughs> So I, 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 for me, I, listen, if you're listening to this, I don't think you would want your art to be cute. <laughs> so keep that in mind. I'm just saying like, I do. That, no, That's but like cute I is kind of like, I mean, my art is if cute. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying like, it, you're, no, no. I, yeah. I, 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 I get what you're saying, Andrea. Like it's an, it's more of an energetic thing, not you're thinking of cute. What are you saying, Rich? I'm thinking cute is like, that's whack as hell. That took no time. By the way, it involved very little skill and about, it involved some mouse clicks. That's what she's saying. That's why she said with a grain of salt, cause she's a really nice person. She's saying go ham. If you have the skills and you can go all out, don't just do the minimal effort because that's going to get you minimal traction. How proud of you are going to be to show off on Instagram and Twitter some bullshit generative art that everyone else is doing? You know what I'm saying? That That's what I mean. Like Q is like, you know, like you don't want to do something that is very easily replicable. If you're looking at her website and we'll drop all this stuff in the show notes for you guys, like this is serious. So if it would be anything less than this, I'd be like, dude, what are you doing? We might not even be talking right now. So I'm just saying that's that's it. <laughs> All right. My follow up to to what you were saying, Andrea, and this goes back to just the business side of being an artist in general. I'm a creative person, too. I, I'm a photographer and I know the thought has crossed my mind before. Am I really not good at business or do I need to level up my photography? And I think any creative listening, that's a really hard conversation for you to have. So as far as just like getting better, kind of to what Rich was saying a minute ago, there is sometimes a truth that we need to be honest with ourselves that we really need to level up and continue to grow and to push ourselves, but also we're very hard on ourselves as creative people. And maybe we just need to learn the business side of things. So how do you gauge between, babe, you need to work on your marketing and business side versus listen, you might need to level up a little bit and spend a little bit more time developing yourself because you spent years developing your craft before you did all of this. Yeah, for for sure. And you know, I think the The more time you spend learning how to create, the easier it's going to be for you to market that, you know? So if you're trying to learn both at the same time, that's two completely different sides of your brain. So it's going to be really hard. You're going to feel like you're going to be stretched. However, for the the artist who, who wants to take some time, put in the hours and then learn the craft and then work on the business side of it, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. Not, not saying that you can't do both at the same time. You definitely can, but it's just, just exciting. Expect it to be hard. You know, if it was easy, everybody would do this. I was listening to a Tom Bilyeu podcast recently. And by the way, if you guys are listening, check out our episode with him. It's coming up very, very soon. But I was listening to a podcast with him and he was shocked, talking about how some people are creatives and they are artists. And at the same time, sometimes it's not until they see something online or an NFT that actually unlocks some of the things that they can create. He also said that some people could do both of those. Some of them are able to inspire themselves, create the art, but on the business side, they're lacking. You're a one 
woman show, it seems like right now. But like, do you have thoughts if people truly don't want to get involved in the business side and literally just want to be the artist? You know, what do you think about getting help or at least like saving up to get the help that you need for some of those marketing and business efforts? Yeah, I mean, th there's so many ways to go about this. Really, though, I don't think the business side is all that hard <laughs> as as people are making it out to be. And I can help you with that. It's, it's really not. And I think it's just scary because it's the unknown, you know, and people haven't tried it yet, you know, but like once you get your website up, it can be hard getting it up and, and it can be hard to get into this space. But once you're in it, it's easy to maintain it. So I think I mean, you you can hire it out if you want to, but I think there's some magic in just diving in, doing the hard thing for a little bit, and then it gets a lot easier, I promise. I want to share my screen so people could see some of this art. Check out some of this um, art. I mean, it's crazy. The thank you for <gasps> veterans. That That's awesome. Springfield sign. I yep. swear I've been I mean, there. Like, yeah. This is crazy. So I, I love the wings. I know the ones in Nashville are really famous. I'm not sure if you did those, but this is all uh, incredible, incredible art. So you guys definitely need to check it out because uh, obviously we've already covered a couple major things, which is you know how to break into the NFT industry, uh, some of the business side, some of the marketing side, but some of the utility here is like, Artist Academy, like I can help teach you. I can help you grow your business. I can help you kind of, you know, go out further into the world. This is not just strictly related to NFT. So I really, really appreciate all this awesome work. And um, that's all I wanted to say. I just want to make sure people get to see it. I have a question. This is not clickbait. That's really going to blow your guys' mind that this is the question for Andrea. But before we do that, Andrea, where can people connect with you online? <laughs> I'm more active on Instagram than anywhere. So if you want to check out my Instagram. Just search Art, Art by Andrea and I will come up And because you probably can't spell my last name. So just go, go to Art, Art by Andrea and you can send me a direct message. I respond to all of them and I would love to chat with you about anything art business related specifically. I love to talk about numbers and help you make money as an artist. All that will be linked to the show notes. We have a random question from a listener that we end the show with and a a couple weeks ago, we had um, Jeremy from Deadheads and the question randomly came up about dead people, which was ironic and I didn't make that happen. And I swear to God, I didn't make this one happen. This was next on the list, Andrea. This comes from Paul Bartlett, uh, Duckhead Art. <laughs> I can't believe this. Would you like your portraits painted portraits of you would you want people to paint your face would That's that be crazy. awkward would it be weird i i'm not into portraits i i know yeah i mean they if you want to sure but no that that would be kind of strange i know for me like being in front of the camera is very awkward even though i like to take photos of other people is it weird for other people to like put you on canvas and all that is that all weird for you yes but but it'd be kind of cool so i yes no you gonna bring us home rich so obviously, this is part of what we are trying to do. And that is educate not only business owners, not only artists, not only just people who are looking to get NFTs, but like we're trying to, you know, kind of cast a light on the business side of things. So please make sure to follow our content. Please make sure to submit questions to us that you might have. And please give us suggestions of amazing, amazing people like Andrea to have on the show, because this is what we live for. And we will see you next time. <laughs>